Hello everyone, how are you doing? Me? Hmm, I'm doing well, considered that I just woke up from a coma. That's why there weren't any videos out. Did you think about that? No. Because you only think about yourself. Actually, I wasn't in a coma. I had to move though, and things got pretty hectic. So happy Halloween, everybody. Welcome back to Super Villain Science. <laughs> Today we are talking about the scariest villain ever to appear in a horrible trilogy finale. I didn't say his name, but he popped into your head, didn't he? But anyway, guys, today we are talking about the symbiote from space himself, Venom. First, we're going to compare Venom to his real-life counterpart, Parasites. Now, you probably have heard about the zombie parasites on channels such as National Geographic. As if this episode couldn't get any more spooky, yes, we are going to talk about zombies. Now, our extensive research <coughs> Google <coughs> shows that Venom is a symbiote, or a fictional parasite of space. It can think and act on its own, and also mind control its host for its own purposes. The most famous example of Venom was when he was attached to Spider-Man, but did you know that he was also attached to Deadpool and Groot? Crazy, right? But anyways, at first Venom seems nice and can help out its host by giving him or her heightened powers, but in the end, it becomes selfish and controls its host to do its bidding. Back to the parasite thing. There are many cases in the wild where parasites will mind control their host and force them to act on the will of the parasite. For example, there are these things called web-slinging wasps that lay their eggs in spiders. When the babies hatch, they release a chemical in the spider that allows them to build bigger, stronger webs, just like Venom did with Spider-Man. So that part actually has some backing to it. Unfortunately, though, Spider-Man can't actually shoot his own webs, despite what Tobey Maguire might make you think. Those movies were still awesome, by the way, except for the last one. But the real question is, can this happen in humans? Well, no, not exactly. But there are some parasites that can actually cause schizophrenia. There is a parasite called to Toxo Toxoplasma gondii, which can hide in cats for years at a time and pass on to their owners. Then the parasite can move into the brain and cause schizophrenia. They also cause little effects like a change in behavior and decreased reaction time, but their biggest cause is schizophrenia. Just another reason dogs are better than cats. Research also shows that the parasite can be passed on from parent to child. If you want to find out more about this, there will be a link in the description. Back to the whole zombie thing. Because I know you're all so excited, there are many theories that suggest that the zombie apocalypse will happen because of a zombie parasite. There are also movies surrounding such theory. A good example would be World War Z. Essentially, the parasite takes control of a human host and controls their mind to eat other people and pass the parasite on. So the closest thing to Venom are zombies, but Venom can think on its own. Its ability to think on its own makes this parasite much more deadly than any current zombie we have today. The biggest reason as to why anyone is still alive in The Walking Dead today is because zombies are very well, to be blunt, stupid. Though Venom is very intelligent and has manipulated its host in many ways to get what it wants. It is speculated that Venom was not originally this twisted, and that bonding with Deadpool actually made it act so twisted and deranged. Deadpool even abandoned the symbiote, claiming that it is cruel to have anything sentient be bonded to someone as psychotic as he is. This parasite feeds off whatever it binds to in order to sustain itself by actually feeding on a certain chemical in the brain called phenothylamine. The feeling of being bound to Venom can be described as being on a drug. Those who have had the parasite suffer severe withdrawal effects, and Eddie Brock even had to go to a mental institution to recover it was not allowed to interact with the general public. As long as Venom stays attached to someone, it is fine. But it too suffers withdrawal effects from not being with someone can even die if it goes too long without binding to someone. This causes this awful creature to lust for human attention, almost as much as your creepy ex-girlfriend, and can never be satisfied, like your current girlfriend. This hunger is what makes the parasite the most dangerous, and because it actually seems to help the organism it bonds to, at least to them it feels that way, it is not difficult for the symbiote to find a host. You had better look out this Halloween as you never know who Venom's next host will be. It might even be you. So remember, whether he's running away from a deranged Deadpool or prominently showing its attachment issues, Venom will never get a good representation in a movie. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and make sure to like and comment on what superhero you would like to see perform in the real world next. We're the Superhero Scientists, signing off. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky, 
scary skeletons speak with such a screech. You'll shake and shudder in surprise.